Welcome to the verse-by-verse study of the book of Proverbs. We shall finish chapter 29 today, beginning with verse 13. The poor and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives sight, also could be translated light or life, to the eyes of both. This verse is a beautiful reminder. Every person, every person on earth has a common connection. We all have been given the beautiful, precious gift of life. And it's up to us on how we choose to live that life. We, of course, can always, we can't always control our circumstances, but we all, we all can control our attitude and our actions regarding those circumstances. If a king judges the poor with fairness, his throne will be established forever. In any organization, a family, a business, even a kingdom, when everyone is treated fairly, treated equally, that justice is equal for all, no matter their status or status, that means that justice is blind, without bias. And that organization will stand and prosper. But if an organization gives special privilege to some and unfair treatment to others, that organization will eventually fall. Next, a rod, a rod and a reprimand impart wisdom. But a child left undisciplined disgraces its mother. Mom is typically the child's teacher. The warning here is a child that does not receive loving discipline from their primary caregiver. Very often that child will grow up to be a heartache to the parents. And that was true 3,000 years ago, and that's still true today. A key to understanding this discipline, this effective godly discipline, is this important conjunction and. There's an and between reprimand and rod. Reprimand here refers to the clear, well-communicated, reasonable instructions, the rules. And, and this rod, a rod, does not necessarily mean corporal punishment, but rather it's referring to clear consequences that happens if these rules are purposely ignored or violated. And these consequences should always be reasonable and fit the offense and be administered consistently and fairly, always in love, never in anger or haste. And lastly, the rule giver should be a model of these rules themselves. When the wicked thrive, meaning increase, so does sin increase, but the righteous will see their downfall. Sin is never static. It's never satisfied. Once it gets a foothold, once integrity has been replaced by compromise, transgressions always increase from bad to worse. But the promise is that God will not allow sin to always grow unchecked. The unrighteous will eventually fall. Next, Discipline your child, your children, and they will give you peace. They will bring you the delights of your desires. Again, we are called to train our children in both instruction and accountability. And when they mature, they will walk a path that brings peace rather than headache. Next, where there is no revelation, meaning vision or godly wisdom, People cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. Again, when an organization or a family has no clear godly core values of right and wrong, it becomes rudderless. People cast off restraint, meaning that any activity, any behavior, any truth can be rationalized accepted, and practiced. There becomes no moral absolutes. Right is always situational, and it becomes self-righteous. As a result, an organization slowly decays from within. Now, this proverb also is translated, 
where there is no vision, people perish. The key word, words are vision and perish. Vision is a Hebrew word meaning to see, to acknowledge, to follow God's wisdom as opposed to ignore it. And the Hebrew word for perish or to cast off restraint is this word para, which means to let go or to be out of control. It's the same word used in Exodus 32 to describe the Israelites' behavior under Aaron when they chose to reject God and began to worship the golden calf. So we have, without vision, without God's vision and his moral compass, we will end up worshiping only material wealth, power, and pleasure. And that never ends well. Next, servants cannot be corrected by mere words. Though they understand, they will not respond, meaning not comply. Again, the point is instructions must be accompanied by action. Words alone are useless. Simply telling a child, a student, an employee, these are the rules, that's just not enough. To be effective, the rule maker must clearly explain and fairly administer and consistently administer both positive and negative consequences of those rules. And again, the rule maker should be a model of those rules themselves. Do you see someone who is speaking in haste, meaning without thinking? There is more hope for a fool than for them. Proverbs throughout the book speaks a great deal about the many pitfalls of a tongue that is unguided by God's wisdom. Next, a servant pampered from youth will turn out to be insolent. So we have, like the child that did not receive proper discipline, here we have an employee who, from, from, a, from their youth, from being a young, pampered apprentice, meaning they were allowed to cut corners, be irresponsible, never held accountable, that youth, sadly, will likely turn out to be spoiled, selfish, and ill-prepared for the real world. Pampering, withholding discipline may seem kind-hearted and compassionate at the time, but actually it's a significant disservice to that youth. An angry person stirs up conflict, and a hot-tempered person commits many sins. It is often the emotional, angry person that can whip up a crowd and change it into a mob. Anger dis displaces reason and compassion and wisdom. Most of the wrongs that we commit happen when we allow our unchecked emotions to rule over reason and wisdom. Next, pride brings a person low, but the lowly in spirit gain honor. This destructive attitude of pride is a constant warning theme throughout Proverbs. Why? Because it is the primary impediment to gaining and exercising godly wisdom. It is always a guarantee that pride will result in a fall. The accomplices of thieves are their own enemies. They are put under oath and dare not testify. This verse is reminding us who we choose to associate with will greatly influence who we become, as well as our own behavior. Here the, the author is citing an example. If we choose to accompany those that are dishonest, we too will eventually be, find ourselves compromising our integrity. Verse 25 is a primary theme of all Proverbs. Fear of man will prove to be a snare, a trap. But whoever trusts, trust in the Lord, is kept safe. Fear of man is the opposite of fear of God. Fear of man means that we're constantly, pridefully chasing the praise and the approval of the world. That's our motivation, our first motivation. To fear not looking good. To fear not fitting in. To fear not being accepted. To fear that we miss that great opportunity unless 
we compromise our core values. We choose to take the easy path of fearing man rather than the more challenging path of fearing God. We laugh at true jokes. We tell that little white lie or exaggeration. Engage in premarital sex, foul language, gossiping, small theft, harming others in order to get ahead. Those are the slippery slope that traps us into a sad life. The bottom line is we cannot fear both man and God. Daily, we must choose between the two. That same theme continues. Many seek an audience with a ruler, but it is from the Lord that one gets justice. Again, a component of fearing man is this desire to be to chase after the attention and the favor of the powerful. This verse is reminding us, though, that we have to remember that the ultimate true power only resides with God. So we should choose God to fear, to respect, and not simply man. This chapter closes with the righteous detest the dishonest, the wicked detest the upright. Scripture prophesied in the last days the unrighteous will hate what is good, hate what is good, and attempt to silence God's moral principles, his wisdom, by calling his wisdom outdated, even evil, judgmental, dangerous, and intolerant. But God's wisdom of treating everyone fairly in love will not be silenced. Light will always dispel darkness. That closes chapter 29. We begin chapter 20, chapter 30 next week. Until then, may God bless you and your family with both his grace and his peace. Aloha.